Best Time One is with Sitag. Hey, and our chief labor correspondent in the studio, hey. Daniel Opoku, hey. who guide us through. We do know that the Minister for Education wrote to detect to, um, you know, freeze their salaries. Oh, we also do know that Sitag has since um, said that, well, all services hey. that must be provided hey. should become a thing of the past. We also do know that in between when the directive was given and when Sitag said we'll lay down our, 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 our tools, the Minister for Education called Setak into a meeting. Oh, did they honor that meeting? I don't think so. Daniel, good morning. Thank you for your time. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Johnny. What's the latest? Right, so yesterday, the, um, the, the, the members of CTAC, the leadership actually, decided to attend the meeting. We have the Minister of Education, also have the Minister of Employment and Labor Relations and also the, his technical team. They were in the meeting. I was told the meeting was fruitful, but unfortunately they could not agree on a roadmap, which has always been the bone of contention that CTAC has consistently been asking for. Let's have a roadmap as to how um, the money should be paid or so, oh, the outstanding continuous service will be addressed. And unfortunately they could not agree on a roadmap, but even though the, the ministers called for the need for CTAC to call off their strike. And they have also indicated that they have to meet their constituents before they were able to call off the strike. So that is where we are now. And I think they are likely to meet either by close of day tomorrow or next week because CTAC must mm. consult their members. What, what is the effect of this strike, especially on the colleges of education, the students, the teaching staff and the non-teaching staff? Right, John, you know they were supposed to have put themselves together for an exams. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, because, uh, they, because of the strike, they could not do that. That is one. And secondly, um, when they say total withdrawal, they, they said they have withdrawn everything totally. Basically, it has to do with they were initially attending general council meetings. Okay. They were also attending promotion meetings. Right. But because of the letter from GTEC, mm. they have decided to withdraw everything totally. So they are not honoring any invitation. Anything regarding academic, they have decided to suspend everything. And what they did yesterday was just to attend the meeting. That meeting that they attended. Right. In fact, there was a national council meeting that was attended by teachers mm. when they were demanding for their laptops. Mm -hmm. What's the latest? Um, yesterday, I got to know that um, <laughs> the deputy minister of education who was present, I think it was somewhere in Kumasi also, um, they, they hooted at him. And my, my, I've been trying to speak to the national leaders also, they were part of the meeting. It has been a major problem. Right. Last two weeks, the leadership of the teachers i.e. Mr. Angel Kabonu, President of NAGRAT, right. also General Secretary of um, NAT, Thomas Musa Tanko, mm. and the President of Coalition of Concerned Teachers, have officially petitioned the National Labor Commission okay. with regard to the laptops. I see. That they have mm. to take a decision mm -hmm. or the teachers are going to withdraw their services. But you know when it goes to the NLC, you have this um, dialogue and order. The Director General of the Education is also present. But unfortunately, they have not been able to conclude on when the laptops will be given. And most of the teachers are upset. They are actually angry because a portion of their money were used to purchase the laptops. Oh. But fortunately, they have not been able to get the laptops. So it's something that the leadership is still dealing with. And they have decided to meet their, their employers, i.e. the Ghana Education Service and also the Minister of Employment, the Minister of Education and all mm. that. Now, for those students who have rented apartments or hostels and they're hoping that they will wrap up with their education and go on to other businesses, mm. they're stuck there because the strike has lingered on. That's what this was the seventh week or yeah. so. Yeah, we are, we, are, we are in the fifth week. Fifth week. On the 14th yeah. July officially 14th was. 14th July was when the 14th of June. Was when declared. Right. 14th June. 14th yes. so June. We are in the fifth week. Yeah. Fifth week. Yeah. What do they do? What um, are they telling you? Now, a lot of the students have decided to go home. And those who rented apartments and also hostels now, uh, even though they have, they, they, the money they paid have not expired, some are still there, others have decided to pack and leave. And the more you stay in without paying, obviously your, your bill is going to increase. So that's a major problem. That becomes a major problem for the, for the students now, which they have been complaining, that governments must sit with their leadership and get the issues addressed. That is where they are now. The, the, the Minister for Education, mm. is he as concerned as we are? Um, Dr. Yao Ose Educhum, Minister of Education. I would say yes, but you know, um, he has not been at the forefront when it comes to some of these 
labor issues consistently when they go to the labor commission you don't normally see him there uh, sometimes he will send either his d director or somebody else to come, but you don't see him but usually he's supposed to be concerned about some of these agitations because when there, there's so much agitation on the education front it affects him and it also affects academic work as whether he's been concerned about it you don't see him at most of the meetings, but actually he, he yeah. the last time I heard of him was when he called the leadership of CTAC into a meeting at the Minister of, at the Minister of Education. But unfortunately, CTAC said they were not honoring that meeting because they were also they had something else to do. That was when I heard about the sector minister. But unfortunately, he has not been at the forefront of trying to get some of these issues addressed. Well, we'll leave it here. <laughs> Helen. Are you as concerned as we are? Very concerned, um, especially now with this total withdrawal. So mm. that means everything has ceased. Everything. Exactly. All and, the and, services. And so there was a time when they were conducting online um, tuition, right. online lectures, right. and now they have suspended everything. And, and that's not good. That is not good. That is obviously not good. The academic calendar um, will be affected or it has mm. been affected. Mm. Now, I guess it should call off strike by close of day tomorrow. Mm. They may have to redesign the academic calendar. Look at it, bringing back the students and then they'll rush them through. Try to make up for the lost exactly, time. Exactly, before they were able to write the exams. Mm. And that is a problem. God, if they had written the exam, they would have vacated somewhere next month. Or hopefully right. by September, right. you vacate the right. next academic work begins. But unfortunately, uh, they have and, a problem. And these are teachers being trained to go these and teach te other... Exactly, <laughs> these are teachers being trained. Wow. Teachers being trained by senior teachers to come out and teach students. Uh. So when I have a problem like this, then mm. clearly we really have the educational an sector is going to be affected. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. I mean exactly. usually when you have this much mounting pressure, you see the unions will, will back off or will back down. Mm. Mm. Is that what you are predicting for CTAC? Maybe by close of today their hand would be forced because now this has uh, become a very mm. serious issue. Yes, we are hoping they should be able to um, get the express mandate from their constituent. If their constituents say, let's call it off, then that is when they will. Other than that, they will still continue. So there's a reason the strike has lingered on, because when they consulted their constituent, they were not ready to give them the mandate for them to call off. Mm. They said, let's keep the strike, let's keep the fire. Mm. And now we have seen total withdrawal because of a letter freezing their salary. That's not the first time. Last year, CETA went on strike, salaries were frozen. But that's when they know it was just about two or three weeks. They called it off. Their president, as I speak to you, they're supposed to pay some arrears to him that was last year's August, but unfortunately has not been paid. It's also part of the agitations that CTAC is asking government to address. Mm. Mm. The distrust is now very deep. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's, and it's when, 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 when you don't have maximum trust, there's this marks of bad faith. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the leadership will sit. Well, even though they will sit in the way because they don't have confidence in the mm. whole system, they mm. try to take and train positions. Wow. But, but John, before I go, yes, on, on, on the SNIT matter, uh -huh. on the What's SNIT the matter, right. So Labour has set up a technical committee, mm -hmm. and hopefully between today and tomorrow, they will put a position paper together. Oh. We don't want paper. They will put a position paper together. We don't want paper. The, <laughs> <basically>, the position <laughs> paper is just to tell you, one, the problems with Senate, mm. looking at the reformation strategy, right. and, so, um, and, and, and also whether to look at the dissolution of the board or to look at Labour's maximum interest. The board should have been dis dissolved a long time it's ago. It's one of the issues that Elizabeth, the right. board have failed as long time ago. The leadership when, when, of Senate and when, when, when the board mm -hmm. should have been gone a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, the standards that Madame Elizabeth or him is trying to hold young people like you and I yeah. to, to yeah. she failed she to failed uphold. It. Yes. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's no, you don't have to even discuss it. She failed it. She failed her own test. She set the marking scheme, set the criteria. She failed. Supervise the exam. She should not be allowed anywhere, along <laughs> with all the people, dissolve it, get this, a new one. Because she came to defend the sale of the hotels. Yeah. yeah. Now that they have backed off, the, the wisest thing to do is to back step, off. Just step down. Yes. <laughs> so we don't want paper. That's why I say we don't want paper. No, but this uh, labor is very much, very much stronger. And that's, that's one of their demands that this board must go. Yeah, that's one of their demands. And the also board the committee will be and the management of Don't Smith. believe that they should have gone a long time long ago. Long time ago. <laughs> we don't oh, this is that. going to be another tug of war because the board and the management of SNIT are also saying that they are only working um, uh, uh, in the best interest of the Ghanaian worker. They are exactly. also very resolute in their position. 
position. That, that so is this true. is this is the year of entrenched positions. <laughs> Nobody wants to back down from their position. As it usually happens within electioneering period mm. when you have labor unions somewhere somewhere taking certain positions because look, you have to get what you want now. Beyond December, you have another problem where mm. a new set of ministers will come where they will tell you, oh, we have to really look at the issue, we need to set up a committee, and that is also going to drag. So this mm. is the time you have to get it. So it's kind of do or die. If the year mm. ends and mm. you don't have your demands met, exactly. I mean, you might as well just forget about it. Exactly. Yes. And yeah. there's another issue from next month where they have to sit and negotiate for salaries for next year. <laughs> <laughs> That's organized labor, fair wages and all that. So all these issues Your, your so, friend, Dr. Bampo, he goes on strike and he puts off his phone. Oh, exactly, we sit in leadership. Their phones are off. <laughs> the president but why do they do that you see when your phone you go is on, you go on strike mm -hmm. we want to talk to you to beg you to then negotiate you with you off. then you put your phones off <laughs> why who does that <laughs> maybe, Helen, we would you do that? maybe we are calling to that the money is ready your phone is off <laughs> 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 there's so and much you pressure go on strike and you put your phone off mm. because you'll be called by sometimes from the presidency from the national security mm. from other security agencies you're from and that top people will be calling you. It's a lot of pressure. So, so you uh, have to put your phone off. Um, that's what you mean. But, <laughs> but, but, but once you're on strike, once you, you have the balls to declare strike, you should also have the balls to keep your phones off. Mm. But strike means strike. means don't reach me. I don't, want to, I don't want to talk to you. There's a song, if you're not talking money, I don't want to talk. Yeah. I think that's what C-Tag is, is trying anyway. to tell all of us. Anyway. Anyway, so let's see. Let's see how some of these issues are, um, are dealt with. Uh, that we really have a problem in our hands. We really have a problem in our hands. Daniel Lopoko is our chief labor correspondent. Join us here on Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. Danny, thank you so much indeed you for your time. Much, Helen, are you going on strike too? Um, I have some demands. Lois, good morning. Um, if they are not met, you guys will be hearing from me. Me to my phone will be off in due course. <laughs> but for now, no strike action pending. Johnny, what about you? Are you also going on strike? No. Oh, okay. What, what am I supposed to All your to do? demands are being met. Mm. Oh, I love that. Professor Atintonu is joining us now as the principal of uh, the Colleges of Education. President of the principals of Colleges of Education. Prof, thank you for your time. Good morning. Good morning. Prof, why are you on strike? Oh, I'm not on strike. Principals are not on strike. Okay. Do, so, <laughs> so, you, so you have my been written... My you, staff are on strike, so... That's where my problem is. I want my staff to be back, but I'm not uh, on strike. But you your know? staff, your staff have demands, and the minister wrote to you and GTEC to ensure that their monies are not given to them. And then now their monies are not being given. They said they have laid down every tool they have. Mm. What do you What do you say? I think that we anticipated. Uh, they have been on strike since June 14th, and we've been negotiating. We never got a solution. But I think we're almost working past that because yesterday we had a meeting with the minister and all uh, the key stakeholders, I mean the government side, Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, GTEC, Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations, and ourselves. So we had a very good engagement. So uh, I think the reason for it was they have been on strike for long, and the minister also thought that they should do that. Uh, but mm. it's not the first time it happened. We had that last year as in August, and uh, we got over it. Right. And I'm convinced this one to mm -hmm. find a way out. What happened at that meeting yesterday? Uh, the meeting yesterday was called to appeal to them and also to firm up some commitments. They are on strike because of some things, allowances that have not been paid, the implementation of the National Labor Commission award that they got last year, May, the government was supposed to have implemented. Some processes have started but we never, have never completed them. So CETA thought that uh, it has delayed, and they wanted some firm commitments. And I think yesterday, we, from government side, there were some commitments. And uh, from their side, they, you know, in negotiations, they have to have some compromises. And I must say that the leadership of CETA that turned up yesterday, they did very, very well. They are our staff. And, uh, I must uh, say that they were able to listen and we arrived at some decisions which were very, very successful uh, than the previous engagements. Now, the teachers are asking for agreements that they had in 2023, maybe before that, to be fulfilled. Government mm -hmm. says, well, get back into the classroom, call off. In fact, they called it an illegal strike. What do mm -hmm. you say? What is it? Is it legal? Is it legal? 
Uh, I don't think I want to discuss about legality and okay. illegality, but no, I would want to focus say. on the fact that the main second demise or the issue that triggered them to embark on the strike, uh, government side or even from principal, the legitimate issue that they were looking for. It's just that uh, the implementation slowed down a bit uh, because there are other things you have to do. So, for example, the one of them is a book and set allowances top up of mm. about 1,100 mm-hmm. or 60 cities, mm. which the government paid part last year. A large portion of it was paid, but this little bit hasn't been paid. And when they embarked on this, where we have gotten to uh, is as controller, it should be paid very soon. Uh, they also talk about parity in payment because the colleges were transitioning to special institutions, and by that arrangement, uh, you ought to have some qualification like NFIL at least, uh, some even have PhD. So they are not saying, in the universities, if you find somebody with that quality, what is the pay they get? They think that in the college space, they don't get paid the same as the assistant at the university. So can we extend those allowances to them? I think this uh, discussion in previous things among the government was that uh, in the universities, these people ought to have PhDs, or if you are recruited, you must demonstrate that you are working towards getting a PhD which is a minimum requirement to be recruited in the university today. Uh, so, therefore, if you don't have that, they couldn't. But I'm happy uh, a consideration has been granted that, look, if they have a master's research degree, just as it's in the university, where they are considered as assistant lecturers, that should be extended to them. So, for me, that one was the biggest problem. And also, when will this be implemented? We have both agreed that implementation should take off by... July 29. So that hurdle is uh, almost cleared. Uh, a third one they brought on the table, which is part of the reason for their strike, is about an all year round work they did in 2022. And they got an award to be paid, some basic salary per those who were engaged in that exercise. So um, it hasn't been paid. We've been collecting the data. And then for the first time, it has gotten to Minister of Finance and got back. When the final process of validating is details have got some, we principals have to complete uh, whatever details left, and then uh, it can also be paid. So for me, uh, these were the issues. And uh, as I said, uh, they are why it was used. And uh, I'm happy some progress has been made. And I would check on appealing to them that we need to be back in the classroom because the students have been around for about four weeks without lecturing. How 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 have you survived uh, with the teachers being away, and students being there, over all these years, uh, over all these weeks? It's been almost five weeks, right? How, how have uh, yeah, you survived? Well, uh, <laughs> uh, it has not been easy, but uh, we managed it throughout. Uh, the students haven't left. Uh, all the principals, we try to ensure that the students are still around, doing independent studies, and uh, also taking part in what we call a a practical led going to the school to observe is part of their work. So that's what I've been doing, but the teacher hasn't gone on well. So hoping that if they get back, uh, then we can uh, see how to go with that one. Prof, can you blow a trumpet on an empty stomach? That's the question Sigtag has been asking. <laughs> it's not an empty stomach. Three, I F- think that you see... Just as I said, yes, they have brought it, uh, whatever. The empty stomach might be they haven't been paid. I'm sure that's what they are talking about. And as I said, uh, with this, this engagement, some decisions have been taken. So we look forward to them. They will engage with their constituents, and then uh, we'll pick it up. What commitment did the Minister for Education and the Labour Minister yesterday give at, at the meeting? I, I think what I walked you through are uh, mostly the issues. So implementation of... Uh, the audit report, migration of them to the tertiary uh, salary. I, I get you. Those are the issues the that came up. But what, were, what, but what were the commitments that were made by by yeah. official dom? No, that, that's what I said. The commitments will be you have asked that we should pay you book and research allowance. And government now said it is with controller to pay and you get the money. There's a commitment. You have asked that you want the commitment. Commitment. If I that want your salary to be like the universities, 
and government said, yes, I have agreed. We will now migrate to uh, implement the staff audit. So these are commitments. I see. Prof, I thank you very much indeed for your time. We're grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's 43 minutes after 8 on sunrise on 3FM 92.7. Danny, that's what the prof says. That's what transpired. So not far from what you said, <laughs> you're within the same province. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm. And then, and, and Professor, I think always the president of Prime Park consistently has been speaking to the leadership of Sita for them to call. But mm. it has become a bit difficult because, you know, Prof was formerly the General Secretary of Utah. Right. Professor Tinto. Right. And also he's, he's also been involved in some of these tries and mm. like it is. So mm. he knows how The to things play. work. Yeah, exactly. That's why I asked him, is it, is it normal to play... Uh, blow, blow your trumpet. Oh, no, 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 that's that's interesting. Mm. That's interesting. Hopefully, let's see how they will be able to get these issues addressed. Thank you so much indeed, Danny. Yeah. Yeah. It's well celebrated, well curated, calm and collected. He is with Gummy and Gummy Associates. Chairman, good morning. How are you, sir? Morning, Johnny. How are you? I'm learning from you, sir. <laughs> now, Sitag. They went into a meeting yesterday with your powers that be. But they have this morning written to say that they have laid down every tool that they have. Should we be worried as much as you are? Yes, we should. We should. So it should be of great concern to everybody. The minister says that they have not worked, so they should not be paid. Sitag's position is that we have had an agreement with you in the past and you are supposed to fulfill your side of the bargain, but you have not done that. So because of that, we are going on strike. This, these two stands that the people have taken, um, where, where should the middle ground be? Yeah. You see, Jenny, um, just like you have uh, truthfully been... Yep. Uh, making news available to the public. Uh, the reality is that if you want to be very open, honest, and be professional about your work, particularly in Africa and Ghana in particular, you are branded as if you are an enemy uh, to a ruling government. The government is for the people and by the people. That being the case, it is better for governments to learn the art of listening with their heart and addressing concerns that people may have. Because if we fail to acknowledge our mistakes, we are doomed to be repetitive of such mistakes and it does not help anybody. Sitag, I don't really know the people involved per se, but because of love for the nation, particularly the teachers by extension to our children in the future, when I followed them, and I do know that it's likely the employer being government may not have all that it takes to handle this matter successfully I got involved without any payment. I spent my own time, money, energy in going about supporting and helping uh, all parties to resolve the matter. But there is a deep, deep-seated negative perception mm -hmm. uh, about the employer as far as the teachers are concerned. They don't trust the employer and they do not intend uh, letting anything to chance until they are very certain that everything about them is understood and payment that ought to come to them is done uh, properly. Let me put it rightly for you. All right. These people have been, on, have been waiting patiently to enable them to either negotiate or engage their employer in a civilized way that will enable them to be paid whatever is due them. When after almost a year, they were not getting headway, the employer itself 
together with them, agree that they should sub subject themselves to the National Labor Commission. And so they went to Labor Commission for not for mediation, but for arbitration. The outcome of arbitration is like going to Supreme Court. When you go to Supreme Court and there's a ruling, is binding on you unless you seek a review. And there are rules governing every such procedures. So they went to the Labor Commission. The Labor Commission itself constituted itself into an arbitral panel. Right. And eventually it came out with an award. The award is therefore binding on both parties. CITAC didn't get all what they went there for. The employer didn't get all what they went there for. Because that is the essence of arbitration. So implementation became now a problem. And by the law, if there's an award and you feel you don't understand something, it is, does not lie in the hands of the employer to interpret the arbitral award without reference to the awarding institution. And you have 28 days to make such an appeal by law. They failed to do that. Like I said earlier, not even the Attorney General has the right to interpret what the award is. Right. If anything, even the arbitral institution, mm -hmm. Labor Commission, do not even interpret. Right. They have to go because interpretation is done by the Supreme Court. But none of them did that. And so I was present at the Labor Commission myself right. on the side of CITAG. Right. And CITAG demanded that it should be paid. And I said in the presence of the Labor Commission that for the first time in the history of this country, people have been patient and went through a process and they are on legal strike. It's not an illegal strike at that time. Now, so Labor Commission upheld and gave an order that the employer should go and pay based upon their own audit that was made by GTEC. And this was admitted, accepted by the, by, by the Labor Commission, and everybody. Right. right. But they were still giving some kind of uh, wishy-washy interpretation to it. And that is what angered the boys and they said they will continue the strike. I was short of going on my knees physically to plead with them to go back. I I did everything I could. They tried to listen. They said, for your sake, we would uh, be considerate and listen to everybody. Even Labor Commission took the employer government to court for enforcement to enable them to apply the arbitral award. It's only when the boys went back to the Labor Commission, right. having been given seven days, right. that the Labor Commission said, I won't listen to both of you. I won't listen to you also because you still remain on strike. That's another kettle of fish. But the long and short of it is that is the employer's own fault because of inability to implement what is due them. And they don't have trust for them, and that's what is escalating the matter to this level. Mm. Now, they, they they have laid down every tool that they have. I mean, the students, uh, the teachers who are being trained, and it, 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 in the long run, I just spoke with Prof, who is the president of the uh, principal's uh, you know group, and he says that, look, they are all begging for the teachers to come back. But I asked mm -hmm. him a question that he didn't answer. Can you blow your trumpet on an empty stomach, sir? So that's where the problem is. I think they will they will pay them because uh, government thought they were going to use, uh, you know, pressure. You know, co that coercive kind of thing that is normally used by government in the in the 17th century, 18th century is no longer a tool to be used in the first century. You have to think outside the box. And they are unable to do that. I, I, I have a lot of respect for, for for the officials who are managing the government machinery today. Right. But the reality is that mm. 
Mm. You have to have uh, the, uh, the real professional acumen, you have to have the skill and the capacity to be able to deliver. And, and here we are. Zosengame, I thank you very much indeed for your time. We're grateful. I'm grateful too. Zosengame is a labor dispute resolution expert and consultant. Join us here on Sunrise on 3FM 92.7. It's 55 minutes after 8. And uh, as some more, we and Penny Pat, Nipa, Nipa, Sim.